In this video, we're going to talk about quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are polynomials where your variable has the highest degree of 2. So an example of a, of a uh, quadratic equation is simply y equals 3x squared plus 4x plus 10, something like that. Notice what's, uh, what's the case here is that the highest exponent on your variable x is 2, right? So that's what makes it quadratic. And when you graph it out, that graph is called a parabola. So that said, first what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different forms in which this quadratic equation could be expressed. And what are the things that you sort of immediately know upon looking at that form? So uh, the standard form, as they call it, is simply this. That's This is an example of a standard form uh, parabola. And so again, this is just about how the algebra, how the equation is expressed. Uh, ultimately, any parabola in the world can be expressed in uh, any, any of these sort of ways, right? And so the standard form is written like this. The key thing here is, you know, the the number in front of the x squared, the sign of it, if this is positive, what that means is that your parabola opens upward like this. That's sort of the basic shape of a parabola, by the way, unlike a line. And so if this is negative, though, then it goes downwards. So just graphically, that's that's just, you know, the basic, you know, with lines, there's the, the end being positive or negative and not telling you whether the line goes up or down. But here with the parabolas, going up or down, it sort of looks like this. That's one thing. This C over here, that's what we call the vertical intercept. So if we were to try to graph this thing out, when x is 0, if I were to plug in 0 for x, uh, 3 times 0 squared, that drops. 4 times 0, that drops. And I'm left with just 10, right? So the C is just the value of y when x is 0. So that's sort of like the B and the mx plus b. It's the, the y-intercept, right? So that's like your parabola looks something like that. That's just that. So that's just called standard form. Um, then there's factored form. Now factored form, that's useful for finding the horizontal intercept. So if this is your xy plane, then, and if this is a parabola, then this point over here, that's your vertical intercept, so that's like your c, but often what's more useful is the x-intercepts, the horizontal intercepts. And so here, in this case, for this parabola, there's two different horizontal intercepts. And so those intercepts are A and B when your parabola is written out in factored form. So long story short, if I were to just new day, new question, give you this expression up here. Suppose you have a graph, y equals x minus 8, x minus 3. And if I just said, you know, what do you know about the graph of this guy? If I were to just say graph this guy out. Um, first of all, what you can tell is what the x-intercepts will be because it's in factored form. It's in factored form, and so the thing subtracted from each x here, so here x minus 8 means that 8 is what's being subtracted, so 8 is one of your x-intercepts, and 3 is your other x-intercept here. Now, first of all, before we get into any more of that, why is that the case? So let's think really carefully about why that's the case. This is not something you have to memorize because um, you can always figure it out. If I were to just say find the x-intercepts here, essentially at, the x-intercept is the value of x when y is 0, right? So if I were to just say 0 equals x minus 8 times x minus 3 and said solve for x, well, think about it. This is saying that these two things, these two terms, multiply to each other to give me zero. Now, if neither of them were zero, that's just impossible. Two positive numbers always multiply to give you a positive. Two negatives get, multiply to give you a, a positive as well. A positive and a negative, they multiply to give you a negative. But the point is that in no combination can they multiply to give you zero. That's only possible if one or both of them are zero. So if the product of these two numbers is zero, what you immediately know from that is this, is that either this term is zero, or this term is zero, or both. Which means either x minus 8 is equal to zero, 
or x minus 3 is equal to 0. Both of those are possibilities. In fact, either one, if either one of those is true, then this, uh, then this will equal 0, and that will be a horizontal intercept. So here, once you narrow it down to this, you can add 8 to both sides to get x equals 8 here. You can add 3 to both sides to get x equals 3 here. And that's how we get that 8 and 3 are the two horizontal intercepts of uh, this parabola. Notice if, on the other hand, you were, if, if these numbers were positive, uh, if you were uh, positive, like for example, y equals x plus 2 times x minus 1. If I were to just say, find the uh, horizontal intercepts here, so you're just setting 0 equal to that. And so in either case, you're just going to say, all right, well, this guy's 0 or this guy's 0, right? And so if x plus 2 is equal to 0, you're going to minus 2 from both sides to get x equals negative 2. So if there's a plus here, it's the negative version of that number that's actually your uh, horizontal intercept. Here, this is just going to be x minus 1 is 0, so x equals 1. And uh, yeah, so that is basically how you can find your horizontal intercepts uh, by putting it in factor form. Now, finally, there's also this thing called vertex form. Uh, if if you're given a parabola and it looks like this, meaning, so just to give you a very concrete example, if I were to give you a parabola and say y equals x minus 2 squared plus 10, and to graph this thing out, one thing to know is that here, whatever is being subtracted from the x, that x value and then whatever is being added here, that y value, that point, 2 comma 10, is going to be the vertex of your parabola. So that's sort of like this point over here where it turns from, you know, decreasing to increasing or vice versa. That's called your vertex. And so here, if you're given this parabola, you could immediately just look at this and say, oh, yeah, 2 comma 10, that's my vertex. And notice that there's a positive, there's not, if there was a negative out here, then that would be downward sloping, but if there's not, then that just means it's upward sloping. So your vertex is over here and it's an upward opening parabola. And so that is how you deal with that. If there's a plus here, then that means that it's really the negative, uh, you really have a negative uh, x value here. So for example, if I were to just say y equals x plus one squared minus two, well then your vertex is gonna be negative one comma negative two. So it's really only opposite day on the inside. On the outside, whatever that number is, is the y value. And on the inside, it's sort of the opposite of that number. That's the x value of your vertex. So again, if I were to just give you this, uh, you know, uh, something in standard form and said find the vertex, I mean, that's not really a useful question. You'd have to convert it. Um, and that's not often a useful task when computers can uh, convert things like that. So it's all about when you're given uh, a certain form of it, what's going to be most useful upon looking at it. So that said, uh, just some vocab words here. You'll often encounter the words, uh, words like this, the zeros of a parabola, the roots of a parabola, the solutions of a parabola, or the x-intercepts of a parabola. Now, all four of these words are synonyms. They mean the same thing. And this one we already saw, x-intercept, that's the x value when y is zero. So really all of these, if I were to say find the solutions uh, of, of this parabola, all you gotta do is find the x value when y is zero. If I were to say find the roots, same thing, nothing to do with square root. If I were to say find the zeros, again, set y equal to zero and solve for x. So let's say I were to give you this question and said, and I said, find the roots or zeros of this quadratic equation. So one thing we know how to do from earlier is factor. So basically we're gonna rewrite this from standard form into factored form. So let's see how we can factor this. Um, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us seven, positive seven, but add up to give us negative eight. And so it's sort of a short list of numbers that multiply to give you seven, right? One and seven or negative one, negative seven. And oh yeah, this one does the trick. Negative one and negative seven add up to give you negative eight. 
which means this can factor as x minus 1, x minus 7. So this guy factors to this, and now it's really easy for me to find the solutions or the zeros of this because I said 0 equal to x minus 1, x minus 7. And here we already saw, once it's in factored form, the solutions or the x-intercepts are, are visibly clear because you just said each of these terms equal to 0. So x minus 1 is equal to 0, and x minus 7 is equal to 0. Add 1 and 7 respectively, and you get x equals 1, x equals 7. So those are your two solutions. Those are your two x-intercepts. If you were to graph this out, 1 and 7, x equals 1 and x equals 7, that's where your intercepts would be, your x-intercepts would be. Um, I'm just making everything else up. Oh, well, uh, again, because we don't, we don't really need to know anything else for this if we're just asked to find the solutions, right? So we don't need to care about what the vertex is for this problem. But yeah, uh, but we do know that it's upward opening because there's a, a positive number in front of the x squared, just a positive one, right? If this was a negative, then it'd be opening downwards. But anyway, so that being said, what about cases when you cannot factor that quadratic equation? If you have a quadratic equation, but you can't factor it, then this process for being able to find the roots uh, won't work, right? To be able to find the solutions. And so whenever you're stuck with that, you can use this formula. And this formula is a way to find the solutions or x-intercepts of, of a quadratic equation, even if you can't factor it. And that's called the quadratic equation, or the quadratic formula, sorry. So the quadratic formula, here is what the quadratic formula is. If your uh, parabola is written in standard form, meaning y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, meaning a is the coefficient, the number in front of the x squared, b is the number in front of the x term, and c is the constant, then this expression, whatever this simplifies to be, this crazy thing, is going to be the uh, the solution, the roots here. Let's actually just test it out, this out really quickly with uh, this guy. In a way, it's sort of like checking our answers in the back of the book. We already know what the roots should be, unless we made an algebra mistake here. We know that the solutions here are x equals 1 and x equals 7. So let's apply the quadratic formula to see what that gives us for these solutions here. So the first thing when using the quadratic formula is to look at your parabola and identify what's your a, b, and c. So here the a, the number in front of the x squared is just one. So I'm just gonna write here a equals one. Uh, the b, the number in front of the x term is negative eight. So b is negative eight. And c is just positive seven. All right, so I got my a, b, and c. And so now I can just plug, plug it all in. So x equals negative b, meaning negative, negative 8, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, meaning negative 8 squared, I'm just going to write that as 64, so that's positive, minus 4 times a, which is just 1, times c, which is 7, all over 2a, 2 times 1. All right, now let's simplify this a tad. So here we get negative, negative 8 is just 8 plus or minus the square root of, this is gonna be 64 minus four times seven is 28, all over just two. And 64 minus 28, you could just use your calculator if you want it to be safe. I'm just gonna use my calculator here. So 64 minus 28 gives me 36. And the square root of 36 is 6, right? So this whole term is going to be just 6 because that's square root of 36. So this is overall 8 plus or minus 6 all over 2. So how do you deal with this plus or minus? What that means is there's actually two different uh, numbers here. So there's the version of it with the plus and then the version of it with the minus. So here, we could basically split this up as this is 8 plus 6 all over 2. And also there's a second answer here, which is 8 minus 6 all over 2. So you, you basically do it once with the plus uh, and once with the minus and see what you get in each case. So in that first case, you get 8 plus 6, which is 14 over 2, which gives us 7. And here you get 8 minus 6, which is 2, 
divided by 2, which gives us 1. So that means we have two answers, 7 and 1. So there you have it. And that's exactly what we got earlier, 1 and 7, right? So the quadratic formula gave us the same answer. But let's now do another problem where we kind of won't be able to check our answer because uh, it's not factorable. So if we were to try to factor this now, there's no real way to do it because you can't really, uh, of the numbers that multiply to give you 5, they don't add up to be, uh, you can't find any pair that adds up to be negative 8, uh, at least not whole numbers. And so that's why we can use the quadratic formula. So again, it's negative b, so negative b again is negative 8, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a is just 1 again, uh, times c, which is 5, all over 2a, which is just 2 because 2 times 1. So overall, that is positive 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 20 all over 2. And so that's, now here, one thing you can do is you could divide this, you could split this 2 up into this term and this term. They both can have the denominator. So this is, you could write this as 8 over 2 plus or minus root. 64 minus 20 is 44. So 44, root 44 over 2. And then you could simplify this. 8 over 2 is 4. 4 plus or minus and here uh, you could, there's a couple of different things you could do here you could re, uh, the easiest thing probably is to rewrite 44 as 11 times 4 so if you were to just rewrite root 44 as root 11 times 4 well you could pull the 4 out because root 4 is 2 so that's the same thing as 2 root 11 so overall the root 44 is 2 root 11 and then it has a 2 in the denominator, so the 2s can cancel. So long story short, this is 4 plus or minus root 11, which means the two solutions are literally 4 plus root 11. Because root 11 is not a nice number. It's some weird decimal. So 4 plus root 11, whatever that is, that's one of your x-intercepts. The other one is 4 minus root 11. Again, that's also just some number in the world. But yeah. So you can get decimals using your calculator if you want, but in either case, those would be the two x-intercepts of that parabola.